Hello. In this video, we want to calculate the specific heat capacity of an unknown metal, but in a case where we also have to include the effects of the calorimeter. In the specific case, we have 2.431 grams of the metal, which start at 100 degrees centigrade, and they are dropped into a calorimeter. The calorimeter has a heat capacity of 8.3 joules per degree centigrade. It also contains 100 milliliters of water at 21.6 degrees centigrade. The final temperature of the system ends up being 22.0 degrees centigrade. Therefore, what is S, the specific heat capacity of the metal? You can pause the video now and work on the problem and then return to see if your solution matches mine. First, we want to calculate the heat flow relative to the water in the calorimeter. So, we have H2O. We know that the volume is equal to 100 milliliters, and we can use the density of water that one gram of water weight, uh, one milliliter of water weighs one gram, to immediately uh, find that the mass of the water turns out to be 100 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree centigrade. And the change in temperature is, since it ends at 22 degrees centigrade, that's our final, minus the initial, which is 21.6 degrees centigrade, that gives us a delta T, a change in the temperature, of 0 0.4 degrees centigrade. Therefore, Q, respect to the water, is equal to M S delta T. So that is 100 grams times 4.184 joules per gram degree centigrade times 0 0.4 degrees centigrade. If we complete that calculation, our result is 167.36 joules for Q H2O. Next, we want to calculate Q relative to the calorimeter. So, the calorimeter. We know that the heat capacity C sub V is equal to 8.3 joules per degree centigrade. Also implied in the problem is that the change in temperature is exactly the same as the change in temperature for water. So it ends at 22.0 degrees centigrade because the calorimeter and the water are in equilibrium. 21.6 degrees centigrade was the initial so the change in temperature is 0 0.4 degrees centigrade. Now Q for the calorimeter is equal to the heat capacity C sub V times delta T. So this gives us 8.3 joules per degree centigrade times the temperature change of 0 0.4 degrees centigrade. So our net result is 3.32 joules for Q cal. The last heat flow to calculate is for the metal. So we know that the mass of the metal is 2.431 grams. The specific heat capacity, that's to be determined, that's unknown. The change in temperature is the final temperature, 22.0 degrees centigrade. Our final temperature will always be a situation where all the uh, elements of the system are all in equilibrium, so they all have the same temperature, minus 100 degrees centigrade. So our change in temperature is actually going to be minus 78.0 degrees centigrade. And any one of these types of problems at least one of the elements will have a change in temperature that is negative. 
So, what is Q for this? So, Q for the metal is equal to M times S times delta T. So, we know the mass is 2.431 grams. We just have to leave the specific heat capacity as S, and the change in temperature is minus 78.0 degrees centigrade. We can now combine terms to find that Q for the metal is equal to minus 189.618 times S grams degree centigrade. Now we can apply the law of conservation of energy, which tells us that Q H2O plus Q for the calorimeter plus Q for the metal has to be equal to zero. So we can plug into the equation 167.36 joules for the water, 3.3 two joules for the calorimeter and minus 189.618 S grams degree centigrade for the metal. Now we can add 189.618 S to each side to get the following result. 170.68 joules is equal to 189 0.618 S grams degree centigrade. Now we divide each side by 189.618 grams degree centigrade and that leaves S alone on the right hand side and we've computed its value to be 0 0.900 joules per gram degree centigrade and be sure to make sure that your specific heat capacity is actually positive it must be positive so in this particular case we took the hot metal dropped into water example and we made it slightly more complicated by adding in the effect of the calorimeter. And if we do so, we can proceed and determine the specific heat capacity of our unknown metal, which corresponds to the specific heat capacity of aluminum. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.